In this video, we're going to focus on solving some physics problems associated with barometers. A mercury barometer is exposed to air at sea level. What is the height of the mercury column? And we're given the density of mercury. So let's draw a picture. So let's say we have a dish that contains some mercury, and we have a test tube that's placed upside down. Now, in order to set up this situation, you need to fill the test tube with mercury first, and then quickly flip it over and put it on a dish. So what's going to happen is there's going to be no air inside the top of the upside down test tube. So you need to create a vacuum for this to work. So the air pressure above or in that low section is zero. So there's no air molecules there. So what's going to happen is the weight of the atmosphere, all of the gas particles are going to exert a weight force on the surface of this fluid. So basically a pressure is exerted. And according to Pascal's law, the pressure exerted on a fluid is transmitted throughout that fluid. So that downward pressure creates an upward pressure that supports the weight of the fluid above it. So anytime you have a pressure, you have a force. And so that's why this height is above this level. So keep that in mind. So how can we calculate the height of the mercury column? So we have the atmospheric pressure, and the pressure inside here is zero. The atmospheric pressure is transmitted through this fluid, so there's an upward atmospheric pressure that pushes the fluid up, and then we have the weight of the fluid, which creates its own pressure, which I'm going to call pHg. That is the pressure that is created by the weight of the mercury fluid above this particular height level. So for this system to remain at equilibrium, the two forces must be equal to each other. And pressure is just force over area, so therefore, the area in here is going to be the same. So these two pressures must be the same. So let's set the pressure of the atmosphere equal to the pressure that's created due to the weight of the mercury column. Now the pressure that's due to the weight of a substance is equal to the density times the gravity times the height. Now this equation I've derived it in another video. So you could find it in pressure in fluids, that's another video I created, and there's another one on absolute pressure and gauge pressure, if you want to know how to derive that equation. So now we have everything that we need in order to calculate the height of the mercury column. But one thing that we need to know is the value of the atmospheric pressure. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm, which is 101,325 pascals. And so that's going to equal to pgh, or rho gh. So rho, the density of mercury, that's 13,600. And we need to multiply that by g, which is 9.8. So 13,600 times 9.8, that's 133,280. So to get the height, we need to divide 101,325 by 133,280. And so the height of the mercury column is 0.76 meters, which if you multiply by 100, that's 76 centimeters. Now, you've seen this value in millimeters. One meter is a thousand millimeters. So if you take 0.76, multiply by a thousand, this equates to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is equal to 1 atm, or 101.3 kilopascals. 
So that's the height of the mercury column at sea level. Number two, the mercury column in a barometer is 72 centimeters tall at a certain elevation. What is the pressure of the air at this elevation? So we have the same picture as the last problem. We don't really need to redraw it. So the pressure of the air or the pressure of the atmosphere for the mercury barometer is going to be the density of mercury times the gravitational acceleration times the height of the mercury column. So the density hasn't changed. It's 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter. The gravitational acceleration is 9.8. And the height, which we need it to be in meters, we need to divide that by 100. So 72 divided by 100 is 0.72. So this will give us an atmospheric pressure of 95,962 pascals. This is rounded to the nearest whole number. So if we divide that by 1,000, that's 95.962 kilopascals. Now if you want to convert that to ATM, simply divide it by 101.3 kilopascals. And so this is going to be 0.947 ATM. So that's the atmospheric pressure in ATM and in KPA. Now, if the barometer was filled with water instead of mercury, what height of water can this air pressure support? Now, as we saw in the last problem, the atmospheric pressure was equal to the pressure exerted by the mercury column. And in the second part, if we replace it with water, the atmospheric pressure is going to be equal to the pressure exerted by the weight of the water column. So I'm going to use H2O. So therefore, the pressure exerted by the mercury column has to be equal to the pressure exerted by the water column. So therefore, we have PGH is equal to PGH. So I'm going to say this is P1 and H1, P2 and H2. G is the same, so we could cancel it in this equation. So here's the formula that we want to use. So the density of mercury times the height of the mercury column has to be equal to the density of water times the height of the water column. Now, here's a question for you. The mercury column is 72 centimeters tall at this given elevation. The height of the water column, will it be greater than 72 centimeters or will it be less? Now, because water is less dense than mercury, we're going to need a greater quantity of water to equal the same mass. So the height of the water column is going to be larger than the height of the mercury column. So for a substance with a lower density, we need a greater height in order to have the same mass, which will exert the same weight force, so that it can be equal to the same atmospheric pressure. So the density of mercury is 13,600. Now the height, it could be in centimeters or meters. As long as these two match, if they have the same units, it's going to be fine. So I don't have to convert this into meters. So I'm going to replace H1 with 72 centimeters. P2 is 1,000, and H2, we can now solve for it. So it's going to be 13,600 times 72 divided by 1,000. So the height of the water column in centimeters is 979.2 centimeters. Now, if we divide that by 100, that's 9. 0.792 meters. So as you can see, this is a lot taller than 72 centimeters. And the reason for that is mercury is extremely dense. So that's why it doesn't have to be as high. Water is not as dense as mercury. Number three, the height of mercury in an open barometer is 69 centimeters. 
The height of another fluid in a barometer is 176 centimeters. What is the density of this fluid? So for this problem, we could use the same formula that we used in the last one. Rho 1 times H1 is equal to rho 2 times H2. So the density of mercury is still 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter. And the height of the mercury column is 69 centimeters. Rho 2 is what we're looking for. We need to calculate the density of the other fluid. And the height for that unknown fluid is 176 centimeters. Now make sure that these two units match. If they don't, you need to convert one to the other. It could be in meters, centimeters, millimeters, it doesn't matter, but they simply have to match. So the density of the other fluid is going to be 13,600 times 69 divided by 176. And so it's 5,332 kilograms per cubic meter. And keep in mind, the density has to have the same units. So those units must match. Number four, the height of water and oil are six meters and five meters inside an open barometer. What is the atmospheric pressure in KPA and ATM? Now let me give you the picture that goes with this problem. So let's say this is water. Water is more dense than oil. So because it has a higher density, it's going to be in the bottom. Oil is going to float on top. So the height of water in this barometer is 6 meters. And the height of the oil is 5 meters. Now, the atmospheric pressure is what we're looking for. We know that the atmospheric pressure supports the weight of the column. How can we calculate it in this problem? So feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. Now, we need to keep in mind that we have two different liquids. So we have the pressure exerted by the water, and also there's the pressure exerted by the oil. And in order for this to be in equilibrium, these two pressures must add up and be equal to the atmospheric pressure. All of the upward forces have to be equal to all of the downward forces. So the upward pressure inside the column, which is the atmospheric pressure, that has to equal all of the downward pressures, which is due to the weight of the water and the weight of the oil. So the pressure exerted by the water is going to be the density of water times g times the height of the water column. And the pressure exerted by the oil is the density of the oil times g times the height of the oil. So we have the density of water, that's 1,000. g on Earth, as always, is 9.8. And the height of water is 6 meters. And then we have the density of the oil, which is 720 kilograms per cubic meter, with times the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 times the height of 5. So first, let's calculate the pressure due to the water column alone. So that's 1,000 times 9.8 times 6. So that's equal to 58,800 pascals. And the pressure exerted by the oil is 720 times 9.8 times 5. So that's 35,280 pascals. So now let's add these two values. So this is 94,080 pascals. Now we need the answer in KPA and ATM. So let's divide it by 1,000 first. 
So this is 94.08 kilopascals. Now to convert the pressure from KPA to ACM, divide that answer by 101.3. And so the atmospheric pressure is also 0.9287 ATM. And so that's it for this video. Now for those of you who want a quick summary of what you learned in this video, here's some notes you can take. So let's say if you just have one fluid in a barometer, and this is the height of the fluid, and you have the pressure of the air exerted on the outside portion of the barometer. All you need to know is that the atmospheric pressure is equal to the density of the fluid times g times the height of the fluid. Now let's say if you replace that fluid with another fluid. You can use this equation. The density of the first fluid times the height of the first fluid is equal to the density of the second fluid times the height of the second fluid. So those are the first two equations that we used in this video. And then if you have a barometer with two different liquids, here's the form that you could use. So just like in the last problem where we had water, and then we had uh, oil on top of that. So let's call this H1, and let's call this H2. So H2 is the height of the oil, and H1 is the height of the water. So if you have two fluids in a barometer, here's the equation that you want to keep in mind. The atmospheric pressure is going to be equal to P1, G1, or just G, times H1, where this is the first fluid associated with H1. And then for the oil, or the second fluid on top, it's going to be the density of that fluid times G times H2. So that's the formula that you need to calculate the atmospheric pressure exerted on a barometer that contains two fluids that do not mix.